Imagine you're in a situation where you end up killing someone in self-defense. Hopefully a situation you're never faced with, but would you be justified in killing the attacker? Today we'll look at how natural law theorist Thomas Aquinas uses the doctrine of double effect to answer this question. Killing in self-defense presents an interesting case for Aquinas' ethical theory. One of the primary precepts of natural law ethics, protect and preserve life, seemingly forbids the killing of human life. But what if you're in a situation where you're forced to kill in self-defense? Here, Aquinas deploys the doctrine of double effect, so called because the act of killing in self-defense has both a good effect, saving your life, and a bad effect, the death of the attacker, hence a double effect. An important aspect of the doctrine of double effect is the intention behind the act. Aquinas distinguishes between intention and foresight. Imagine you're writing notes in class. Your intention is to record information, not to use up all the ink in your pen. However, you can foresee that eventually, if you write enough notes, your pen will run out of ink and you'll need a new one. But that's not why you're writing. You're writing to record notes. The intention is to write, and a foreseeable consequence is the depletion of ink. Similarly, well in fact it's not that similar, but you get the point, uh, killing in self-defense, I can foresee that my aggressive or desperate act to save myself may result in the attacker's death. However, it's not my intention to kill the attacker. The intention behind my act is to save my life. The death of the attacker is an unintended but foreseeable consequence. This distinction is crucial, but for the act of killing and self-defense to be justified by the doctrine of double effect, it must meet a total of four conditions. One, the act to be done must be good in itself or at least indifferent. Aquinas categorizes human acts into three types. You've got bad actions like murder, good actions like almsgiving, and indifferent actions like sunbathing. Condition one stipulates that the action be either good or indifferent, but not bad. Since protecting your life is good, we fulfilled the first condition. Two, the good effect must not be obtained by means of the bad effect. In other words, you must not perform an action with a bad effect to achieve a good effect. Now, you're not killing the attacker to ensure your survival. The death is an unintended, though foreseeable, potential consequence of your defensive actions. Three, the bad effect must not be intended for itself, only permitted. As we've seen, the bad effect is not intended, only foreseen, so that's fine. Four, there must be a proportionately grave reason for permitting the bad effect. It is proportional because the negative value of the bad effect does not greatly outweigh the positive value of the good effect. That is, an innocent life has been saved against an evil attacker who has died. If there was an alternative course of action that creates less harm, then this would be the preferred action and killing in self-defense would not be considered proportional in this case. To sum up, Aquinas' doctrine of double effect helps us navigate more dilemmas by focusing on intention and proportionality. It justifies actions that produce both good and bad effects. As long as the intention is good, and the bad effect is not intended, nor disproportionate. For Aquinas, understanding this doctrine can help us make more ethically informed decisions in difficult situations. In our next video, we'll look at Aquinas' views on abortion and discover how the doctrine of double effect can be applied to this issue. His views on this might actually surprise you a little. What do you think of the doctrine of double effect? Is it a good way to solve moral dilemmas? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.